In this video, we're going to do more with proofs with parallel lines. So for the first example here, we have a couple givens and we're trying to prove parallel lines. So if we're trying to prove parallel lines, that should be telling you that you're looking for a pair of congruent alternate interior angles, congruent alternate exterior, congruent corresponding angles, or supplementary same side interior angles. So to start off, let's look at what we're given and go ahead and write that down. I'm going to do these proofs as flow proofs. Um, you can do them as two columns if you want, but I think most people tend to prefer flow proofs. I'm going to go that way. So L is parallel to M. That's given to me. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. That's given. And notice when I wrote my givens, I wrote those on the same level. So that's going to be typical. I'm going to write anything that's given to me and anything that I can conclude from the diagram right up top here because that's my starting point. And then I'm going to mark it. So L is parallel to M. So I'm just going to go ahead and, there we go, attempt to highlight those. So those are parallel. And then from there, if those lines are parallel, what conclusion can I make? I also know that 1 and 2 are congruent, so I'm going to go ahead and mark those. But right away when I look at angles 1 and 2, I know that those are not going to help me with these parallel lines because of the fact that they're not on the same transversal. So I really look at these two parallel lines, 1 and 2 are on two totally different transversals. So that's not going to help me make any kind of conclusion. Um, but we'll save that one for later. So if we look at L and M being parallel, the conclusions you can make are based on your transversals here. So if I highlight this transversal, I could conclude that 1 and 3 are congruent, which actually the reason why I chose to highlight this top transversal, not the bottom one, is because I saw angle 3 was touching that transversal, and there's a reason why there's a 3 on it. If there was a 3 down here, well, then I might have highlighted that one and said, let's look at that one first. So the fact that angle 3 is on there, well, 1 and 3, if you turn your paper sideways, 1 and 3 are corresponding angles. So I can say that those are congruent because parallel lines imply congruent corresponding angles. So I'm going to go ahead and make that conclusion. So parallel lines imply congruent corresponding angles. And then from there, you might look at my picture and notice I have three angles all with single arcs on them, which really should mean that all three of those angles are congruent. So 1 and 3 are congruent. I just proved that. And we know 1 and 2 are congruent because that was given to me. So that really means that 2 and 3 have to be equal to each other. So if you look at the statements here, angle 2 is equal to angle 1 and angle 3 is equal to angle 1. So that means that 2 and 3 have to be equal to each other because they're equal to the same thing. So using both of these statements, my conclusion, so now look at how I'm writing this, I'm taking both of those statements and I'm making a conclusion that says angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. And that you could say it's called the transitive property. You could say two things equal to the same thing are equal to each other. I could also just say substitution. So substitution meaning I'm taking angle um, 2 and I'm plugging it in for what it's equal to. So I'm taking angle 2 and replacing it angle 1. Um, so that's substitution. So then why is that helpful? So why would these two angles being congruent help me? Well, look at the transversal they touch. They touch this transversal and these two lines. So see in purple now I have my two lines being cut by a transversal. So if we have 2 and 3, those are corresponding angles. If those are congruent, doesn't that mean that these lines have to be parallel? And that's what I'm trying to prove. So my last step here is going to be to go ahead and say what I was trying to prove. A is parallel to B because congruent corresponding angles imply parallel lines. So notice how I switched the order of my reasons here. In this pink reason, I put parallel lines imply congruent corresponding angles, where here I switched it because look at the conclusion I made. Here I made a conclusion about the congruent angles, so that came after the arrow. 
here I'm making a conclusion about the parallel lines, which is why that comes after the arrow. So just keep that in mind. That does make a difference. So now if we look at the next one, so I'm going to go ahead and just enlarge this a little so I can see this diagram. And if we look at this next one, um, I have angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, so we can mark that. And then it says 3 and 4, so that should be two arcs now, are congruent. I want to prove that lines L and M are parallel. So I'm going to start with my given. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Remember, those are going to start on the same level. That's given. And then angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. That's given. So if you look at just the top half of the diagram, well, if I look at this as my transversal, and these are my two lines that are being cut by that transversal, those two lines have to be parallel to each other because one and two are congruent and those are alternate interior. So given this um, statement, I can imply that lines L and N are parallel, and that's because congruent alternate interior angles imply parallel lines. I can make the same conclusion for the bottom half of the diagram. So here's my two lines, here's my transversal. I can say that these two lines are parallel because for the same reason, I have the congruent alternate interior angles. So angle N and M, or line N and M are parallel because congruent alternate interior angles imply parallel lines. Again, notice that my conclusion is the parallel lines, it matches what's in the box. Now, if I take these two things, if I have two lines, so if M is parallel to N, that means they have the same slope. And if L is parallel to N, that means those have the same slope. So doesn't that mean all three have the same slope? It also means that all three are parallel to each other. So I can now say that L must be parallel to N. We can't use substitution as a reason. Substitution only works for things that are equal. So I'm not substituting. So if you look, they're both parallel to N. But I'm not substituting M in for N, or I'm not substituting L in for N. What I'm doing is I'm saying that two lines are par if two lines are parallel to the same line, they have to be parallel to each other because all their slopes then have to match. So I can't use substitution because it's not equal. So just keep that in mind. So continuing, um, we have, I can go ahead and make my statement here. Um, two lines parallel to the same line. are parallel to each other, something like that. Or you could say if lines are parallel to the same line, they all have the same slope, making all three parallel to each other. Something along those lines. And then the last one here, let me extend this page again. Um, so I have, in this last one, we have a diagram with lots of numbers to look at. So this one's going to look similar to the very first example that we did. So we have um, two sets of parallel lines given to us. So instead of trying to prove parallel lines, we're going to try to prove congruent angles. So we're trying to prove B and 7 are congruent. So let's look at what we're given. We have this line and this line are parallel. And notice that B and 7 are not on the same transversal. So if I looked at this transversal first, then I can make a conclusion about B and another angle on that same transversal. And then what I can do is turn my paper sideways and look at these other two sets of parallel lines and find a common transversal that would be helpful. So let's start with writing our given. So XY is parallel to ZW. So that's given. And then we have RS is parallel to TQ. So I'm going to start with 
my left side here, and I'm going to start with what I have highlighted. So angle B is congruent to several different angles, and what I'm thinking would be helpful is to find an angle that it's congruent to up here, because then I can use the second, parallel, the second set of parallel lines, and I can still use that transversal, because 7's on it, and if I know an angle that um, B is congruent to on this transversal, well then hopefully I can show that it's congruent to 7. So what I'm seeing is I could say angle B and angle 2 are congruent to each other because those are corresponding angles. So that's not the only option, but it's one of the options. So I'm going to go with that one. So I'm going to say angle B and angle 2 are congruent. And that's because parallel lines imply congruent corresponding angles. So now notice I went back to starting with parallel lines because that's what I was given. And then the conclusion I made is about congruent angles, which is why after the arrow is the congruent angles. And then from there, if those are congruent, well now let's look at the second pair of parallel lines. So these are parallel. And if you look at this transversal right here, if these blue lines are parallel to each other, that would mean that angle 2 that I just used and angle 7 have to be congruent to each other because of the Z shape. Those are alternate interior angles. So I can conclude from this given that angle 2 is congruent to angle 7. And again, this is just one possible way of doing this. I purposely chose 2 because it's on the same transversal as B and it's on the same transversal as 7. So that's why I picked that one. And now I can say 2 and 7 are congruent because parallel lines imply congruent alternate interior angles. And then from there, now we have two angles that are congruent to the same angle, so they must be congruent to each other. So you could write that out kind of like what we did for parallel. But because we're talking about congruent or equals, we can just use substitution. So now I can say angle B is congruent to angle 7 by substitution. Because you can substitute into equal, but you can't substitute into parallel. So that proves it right there. Now that's not the only way. You could have also said, well, angle B and angle 5 are congruent. Those are alternate interior. And then I could have said 5 and 7 because those are corresponding. So it's kind of like using the opposite reasons, but it would have done the same thing. So to do this, you always want to stick with an angle that's on the same transversal. So some angle uh, in this region is perfect because it's on the same transversal as B and it's also on the same transversal as 7. And since we knew both sets of parallel lines, we were good to go. So try to check your understanding problems. Do the best you can. I understand proofs are a little bit challenging, so just try to make conclusions based on what's given. That's what I want you to attempt when you're doing proofs. Anything that's given, make a conclusion and try to get to the final conclusion, which is that proof statement.